So here's an update from my table that I did. I two-toned my table and I love everything about it except the finish. And I used a shellac finish because that's what I had and it really is not doing what I like. So I'm going to be redoing this and updating my blog but let me give you an example. If you look up close that there's that circular area in the table that was from a pizza and it had the cardboard underneath it but it damaged the table and every single time you put anything on it and I can still see the bubbles so I'm just really not happy with the shellac idea so I'm gonna sand it off and I'm gonna show you a better method which is what I should have done to begin with and that is a glaze coat this is the answer to all that ails you. If you really want to have a coat on your table that is durable and will withstand everything, this is the answer. I've used this before, and I was just trying to save a little money and time, but in the long run, it's just worth it to use it. Um, you can use polyurethane, and that would be better than the shellac. But if you want a table that's going to withstand every single kind of thing, glaze coat is the answer for you. And I will give all the instructions of how to use it. Okay, so I sanded off everything that I didn't want. So I'm getting closer. Okay, this is what your table should look like after you've sanded it and stained it. I had to go backwards and so I had to restain. If I didn't restain, it would look dull because after you put the epoxy on, it just magnifies whatever it is you have on the table. So I'm using uh, Rust-Oleum Kona wood stain. So I'll finish the table, let the stain dry, and then I'll be ready to do epoxy. Okay, the entire table has stain on it now. So, it's a very light coat, so it shouldn't take too long. I'll go ahead and let that dry, and then the fun begins. Okay, the next thing I need to do is I need to prep my table for the drips. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be dripping, so you've got to have cardboard below it. And in between my leaves, I had to put some cardboard on so that it doesn't get the stuff in the grooves of my table. So I just taped it with some masking tape. Okay, and now you can see that underneath my leaves there's cardboard so that the things that drip over won't get on the grooves. The other thing you need to do is you need to tape just up underneath the very edge of the table Otherwise, it'll leave little bubbles along the way. Today's the day I'm going to put my glaze coat on. And since my table is in four sections, I'm going to do it in four steps. I could do it all at once, but if you over mix and you don't apply it correctly, it really wastes a lot of product. So I'm going to go through and mix four different containers and spread it. The best thing to spread is with a plastic uh, putty knife or you can use a paint stick, whatever works the best for you. And I'll show you that step next. I did um, rub the entire table with alcohol. So after you've sanded it, and you've stained it, then you need to let it completely dry and then add, um, rub it down with alcohol to make sure that it will stick to the surface. Now, as you can see, there are still grooves and dimples in my table. And so those are something that bother me. But if I was to sand those completely off, it's actually just a piece of, of, for Mike, I guess, over the top of it. So it would really mean sanding down to some not so nice wood. 
So I leave those dimples in there because once I put the next coat on, it won't matter. That's what's great about this glaze coat. Okay, I'll show you the next step. When you are working with glaze coat, it is imperative that you wear gloves. No matter how good you are, you think you might not get it on your skin, but it always gets there for some reason. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to, with my table that's in four sections, I'm going to be doing a thin coat, letting it rest for about six hours, and then another coat over the top. So I will have a total of eight times that I'm going to be doing this. So it is a bit of a commitment, but I had a disaster with my table, with my shellac, and at this point I just want a really good coat on my table, so I'm going to do go by all the rules. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mix the two types of glaze coat, and you mix them for six minutes and they get equal portions in a disposable cup and disposable mixer. And you do this by hand in a circular motion and you don't cut it short. The six minutes really needs to happen in order to get it to heat up to the correct amount. The key to this step is to make sure that you add the correct resin first. So you go with A first in your cup and then you add resin B and start mixing. There will be air bubbles but you try to just go in a circular motion. I'll see if I can after I pour it I will see if I can video myself stirring. It is so important that the measurements are exactly 50-50 so I've marked on my cup and I will throw one of them away. All right, I have my two equal parts. Once I pour that mixture into that mixture, then the time begins. And after that happens, you don't answer the phone, you don't answer the door, you don't stop your project until it is done. Because any interruptions will mess it up. I was doing a table once and my sons answered the door, anyway. It was a disaster because I got interrupted for just a couple of minutes. So once this process starts, there is no turning back. Okay, I purposefully did this when no one was at home because you don't want any dust floating around the room while you're putting this application on. And you can't, like I said, you can't have any interruptions. So it is a little bit tricky to try to video and do it at the same time. So I'm going to do my best. But as you, as you mix the two chemicals, it goes into kind of a cloudy white color for a while. But this has to be six minutes long. So this portion of mixing is just something you need to do and time it. And so... I'll check back with you after I get this mixed. Okay, this is what it looks like after six minutes of stirring. As you can see, there's a lot of bubbles, but don't worry about the bubbles. Most of them work their way out, and those that don't, we use a heating torch, hair dryer, or other source. So I'm gonna start pouring, and I'll video on the next step. Okay, so it's been about 20 minutes. And as you can see, it is starting to level off. And I have been using the heat source on it. I, earlier I said a hairdryer would work, but really it doesn't because that would blow too much uh, dust around. But for instance, there's some little bubbles popping up still right there. So you take a blowtorch or a heat gun and just run it across where the bubbles are and it'll get them to go out. Mine is a hot shot heat gun. If you don't have one, borrow one. <laughs> but again, like I said before, a lot of the bubbles will work their way out. And as you can see, it is starting to level itself off. 
quite a bit. And realizing again, this is still just my first coat. I'm going to be doing two coats. So it's always best to have a really thin coat for a base and then put a thicker coat. I know it looks really thick and it is thick for if you were talking about polyurethane, that'd be really too thick. But for this, this uh, glaze, this would be considered thin. Okay, I'll check back in a little bit. As your glaze starts to set up, this is when you want to go along and make sure that there are not any spots that are going to harden into a, um, the edge of your um, surfaces. You can sand those off later, but it's a lot easier to get them now. That's why we have the tape below. So you just run something along the edge to make sure that there's no bubbles anywhere or drips. You don't want to have any drips. And if they're big drips, then this will get it. If not, like just weird ridges, that's why we have the tape. Okay, so I have the first coat on the outside part of the table, and I just barely put it on. I went ahead and did a little bit thicker. As you are stirring, the, um, you want to leave some in your container, and then when you see holes, you just go along and let it drip where the holes are. Cause you, if you try to smooth it, it'll just make it worse. So you go along and try to fill the holes and a lot of it will flatten out. Okay, I want to show you what happens when you have these bubbles. Um, you just get your heat done and you'll watch them just disappear. So this is a pretty awesome thing. Okay, I'm going to show you some bubbles and what to do about them. The heat gun, it's a miracle worker. Okay, here's an update. This is again after the first coat. As you can see, there's dimples still in it, but um, I'm going to let this dry a little bit and then I'll put the next coat. The middle section I did really thin because it said to do the first layer thin, but um, I went ahead on this, the outer section, and did it thicker. But it's getting there. I can still see some dimples. I'm trying to get the camera so you can see it, but it's coming along. The great thing about this process is it only takes from start to finish 24 hours till it's completely hardened and dry, unlike other ways. So I'll continue showing. See, it still has some ridges. That's why two coats is best. The middle section has a lot of ridges, but a lot of them have worked their way out. There's a few spots here. So I'm going to let it dry a few more hours and then I'll put the second coat on. Okay, now that it has quit dripping, this is the time to take the tape off. Even though I'm still going to be putting another coat on, I won't necessarily need to go clear to the edge of the table because I don't have any ridges near the edge. So I'm just going to take the tape off because I don't want it to be there permanently. Okay, so this is my second coat of resin going on this table. So I went ahead and mixed a little bit larger batch now that I am familiar with this resin. 
So I'm just going to pour it on. As you can see, there's still holes and whatever. This has dried for four hours. So I'm going to put the second coat on, and then I'll check back. So you can see it for just a I'll show you. I just pour down the center, and then you smooth it out like you would if you were, I don't know, decorating a cake, I guess. Okay, I'll check back. Okay, once you get it somewhat smoothed out, um, save some resin, and you just go along and you let it drip wherever there's grooves. You can't smooth those anymore. They just need to drip off of here, and that will eventually level itself out. And then once it's as level as you can get it, then you use the heat gun to get out the bubbles and let it dry. And that's all there is to it. Okay, I got the second coat put on and I used the blowtorch to get all the bubbles out. So now it just needs to dry. It takes 24 hours before it's completely dry. But I love how it turns out. I mean, it starts looking like glass tabletop. So this is the critical time when you don't let any dust or fingerprints or anything. And I still have my cardboard below because it still drips. It continues to drip and drip and drip. So I'll check back when it's dry. Now the table is officially done. It looks like almost a glass tabletop. It's so um, reflective and it looks wet even though it is not. My family keeps asking, are you sure we can use the table? Because it just looks like it's still wet, but it's actually dry and very hard. So. That's what the end result looks like.